Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, if you missed the first part of this video, I will link it somewhere in the video or in the description box. Um, we are continuing on with the Christmas tree surprise stocking and I am working on the blue present. And um, I'm showing you um, the outline stitch using the me metallic thread, which can be rather tricky. So. If you've ever worked with metallic thread, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it likes to break or strip easy, so I like to work with small um, small batches at a time. So normally with regular thread, I use the entire piece, but with metallic thread, I probably use like a third or a half. Um, it, I always do it by eye, so I like to work with small um, small sections of metallic thread using small pieces of thread so the same it's the same concept with embroidery thread so make sure you knot it in the back and I don't, I don't really double knot metallic thread I don't feel like it needs it so we're gonna do that for the rest of the present and I'll do that off camera so this is what it looks like finished and you can tell that the felt is a little on the thin side and um, Felt does that, so it, it tends to warp when you have a lot of thicker thread on here. So it's pretty normal. And right here I'm showing you the applique stitch, I'm sorry, the outline stitch with regular thread. See how much easier it is to work with? I know some people have tricks with working with metallic thread. Um, I don't really have a trick just to work with smaller amounts because it tends to, the metallic tends to strip off the, the thread that it's on a lot quicker. So I'm just using a dark blue outline stitch to the line right here, and I'll do that to the top too. And then we'll move on. Okay, so we have it done, and I just uh, applicate it three out of the four corners, or four sides, and here I am stuffing the present. And I stuff it just enough to give it that 3D look. And if you're worried about wrinkles, they'll, they'll sort themselves out. It's not really that big of a deal. I know wrinkles bug a lot of people. I know a lot of people iron out their felt honestly i don't see a, a need really felt is um it's um it stretches so you know when you when you have a piece that you're working on and you iron it it's just one less step for me to do so i don't even bother ironing my felt plus um there is a chance that you could burn the felt or accidentally take off stamps like the stamp I know a lot of people have had success ironing their felt. I just don't bother. So there is a finished present. And I had to really speed up um, this, this section of video because it took me forever. <laughs> and here's the cording. So I have a separate video for cording. If you don't know how to make cording, I'll link it up here in the video. Um, so you can see that, but I'm just creating a knot. I'm creating two knots back here because I want to save this cording for later. I want to reuse it. So I do one knot for the cutoff and one knot for the new one. So that way I don't have to waste cord. So now I'm going to take the rest of this and form kind of a bow-ish thing, I guess. <laughs> I'm just gonna show you my process here. So I'm taking a yellow thread that matches and I'm just gonna go up towards the middle to kind of secure it so it doesn't go anywhere and that way I can um, make as many loops as I can to make the bow. Rather simple. And you can adjust it however you need to, and then uh, secure the middle with a few more stitches. 
and it shouldn't go anywhere. And that's how I make the bow. Really simple. I love it when it comes together really simple. Because it looks like it, you did a lot of work, but in reality it's not, not that hard. And if you need to trim it, trim it. And if you need more, make a longer piece. So here I am double knotting it in the back and then we'll be done with this present. Super cute. Now we're gonna work on the little leaves that go on top. So I'm just gonna do the outline here. So um, with with the green felt, there's two different colors. There's the light green and the dark green. So when we are on the light green felt, like we are now, we use a dark green outline stitch. And it does say that in the instructions. But that tends to be the um, pattern with these kits. I've noticed several kits that I've done these leaves for have that in common. So even honestly, even if it doesn't call for a darker, I, I tend to do that. Just to, the contrast really makes it pop. So I'm just doing an outline stitch here and I'll do an outline stitch on the rest of the leaves and then um, I will applique the leaves with a bead and sequin in the middle and I'll show you what I mean in a second. This stocking is for a family member. Just wanted to point that out. <laughs> but I've had lots of people request that I do this stocking. So I um, I was able to get one in my possession and I'm excited to share it with you. If you've made this stocking, leave a comment down below and tell me how you liked it. Okay, so skipping ahead, we've got the position that we need and we are only using beads and sequins to put these leaves on. So I'm just gonna come up from the bottom. And I've got my beads and sequins over here ready to go. And I'm just I'm basically making a triangle and that's all that I need to do. I love uh, pieces that, that just need like one element, you know? Plus it gives it that 3D look that we like. Has anybody ever put holly leaves on a gift? I'm trying to think if I've ever done that. I know I've done bows and I've done name tags. But I've never actually done holly leaves on a gift before. Hmm. I'm sure people do. And I'm using two strands for my beads and sequins. Um, the kit only calls for one strand, but I always use two, just because sometimes these kits tend to have really a fragile thread. I've had, like, the kit that I'm working on right now, um, some of the colors are a little bit thinner than other colors, so um, just overall, in general, I just double up on my thread just to not worry about it. Even even sometimes I'll double up on my thread and it will still break because that's how fragile some of the thread is. I think some of the newer kits, some of the newer kits have very decent solid cotton thread, which is nice. But some of these older kits tend to have the thin, you know, cheapo thread in there. Feel free to replace any thread that you want so now we're working on the there's like a toy horse that goes here and this is the little tail so I'm just um, folding it in half so you can kind of see what I mean and the tail is gonna go right here on the little horse cute little rocking horse all right so the rocking horse has the same outline stitch and it's just stuffed and then the mane um, I just did an applique stitch on the bottom and that's it. So that the main, the top of the main sticks up. And here's the body. Fairly simple, outline stitches um, right there. And then I just did like little tiny satin stitches, like little tiny satin satin. Like a couple of stitches for satin, that's it. And then the beads and sequins. And then um, we're gonna do the saddle and we're gonna do the reins. And here's more cording. 
And I'm just going to put the reins on, on this cute little horse's face here. I'm just showing you my process. Um, I kind of did a few things different. Um, just because the instructions, uh, they were, the instructions were okay. They weren't as clear. So I just kind of had to figure it out myself, like the pattern that I wanted. So I went this direction, which worked out for me. And then I went back and I did add a couple of tack down stitches to keep the ropes from moving around so much. But uh, this is the, this is the way that I found that was helpful for me. And then that way I can do it in one smooth motion rather than jumping around and wasting cording, you know? So I'm just adjusting it here. Adjust as you need to, because you don't want it to look like the rope is like strangling your horse. <laughs> it's the last thing you want. You want it to look like it's laying there nice and, um, there. Yeah. So you want to make sure that it's laying on, on the horse's face the right way and that you don't see the stamps. So I did go back and I did put a tack down stitch down here to like open up the loop a little bit because I felt like the, the loop of it wasn't quite as open as I wanted. So I did a couple of stitches down there and then I did a couple of stitches on the face. Cute little horsey. And then for the tack down stitch, I just use one strand because it doesn't need a thick piece. And I did go through the stuffing on this, but just enough to where it doesn't look like it's warped because it's just a tack down stitch, you know. I just didn't want to, um, I didn't want the rope to move around. I wanted it to look like it was secured there. So I put a couple of little tack down stitches and it worked just fine. Turned out so cute. Interesting color for a uh, wooden horse. You'd think it'd be like brown or something, <laughs> you know? Yellow is an inter interesting color. Okay, now we're gonna do little ears and a saddle, which are fairly simple. They just layer on top with beads and sequins. And then the ear has an outline stitch. And now we're gonna put this present in. And um, I did use French knots for the present. If you do not know how to make French knots, I do have a little uh, I do have a short tutorial on how to make French knots that I'll put up somewhere in, in the video, so. I am just lining up this cute little box. And there we go. Both top and bottom are stuffed. And then once that's done, then we go and we put the ribbon on. But I'm gonna, I'm just making sure that I know which, which side goes where. Okay. That's how it goes. Okay, real quick, I wanted to show you this because it can easily be um, forgotten or not even noticed. Um, sometimes your kits will have um, areas that look a little bit darker or thicker. And um, this is the outline stitch that goes underneath the top of the box that meets the bottom of the box. And it's supposed to create like a like a shadow and to outline the top of the box type of thing. So I wanted to point this out because it could you could easily miss it. Um, Cause the instructions just say like out, you know, put an outline stitch here and here and whatever. So anyway, the, the, sometimes the instructions can be a little bit vague, but the picture does show that there is a stitch here. And sometimes the picture on the front of the kit shows it too. So make sure you uh, pay attention to all those details. Now that we have the ribbon on, let's move on to the bottom of the rocking horse. 
Yeah, I already started. Um, I did an outline stitch in dark green. And now I'm going to do kind of like a chain right here. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'll create a loop there. And then I come up to the top here. And I grab the tip of this loop with my needle. And I pull it alongside the stamp. See what I did there? Yeah, just a little chain right there. Easy peasy. And you do that for the other side too. Just hiding my thread. All right, and I'll do the other one off camera and then I will show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so here is the finished bottom of the rocking horse. It is stuffed. I like to go to one end and then come back around and then stuff it. So we are now working on the toys. So this is a ball that we're gonna work on and it's kind of in layers. It's gonna go like that and like that. And it's just basically beads and sequins. And this is what it looks like done. An applique. It does have a backing, so we did stuff it. Same with the present. Simple stitching, and then we stuff it. These presents are so easy to put together and to put on. And then now we're gonna do the ribbon, which is just a simple applique stitch. And then we're gonna start on this drum down here. Here is the drum. And the drum has cording right here. And I like to thread my cording because it's so thin that it's totally easy to thread it through. So that's what I'm showing you right now. Okay. I'm just fixing my thread here. I like to use thread to kind of... Um, uh, I use the thread to needle through the needle and then and then I have that. that's kind of like a guide to create like a small hole and then it's really easy to actually thread this this uh, cording. Luckily the cording itself is really thin so it's fairly simple to do that. When I okay so I'm showing you a piece that hasn't been cut yet I like to just go sort of by the edge and make sure I leave enough room to cut out the piece. I have accidentally cut stitches before. Yep, that's happened. So just be careful when you're cutting these out. Or cut it out first and then do the cording. However you want to do that. We're gonna put that drum there. And then I'm just showing you, I kind of skipped ahead and just did the bottom and now I'm gonna do the top and here's a little piece, a little piece. Pretty simple. And that goes on the bottom of the rim there. Yeah, the <laughs> putting the drum together was kind of a puzzle, but that's what the drum looks like finished. It's super cute. Now we're gonna start on the bear. So the bear's legs, fairly simple with outline stitch, a little bit of stuffing to give it some depth. And then the bear body, just an applique stitch. And then the face. So we did a, a satin stitch in the eyes, satin stitch in the nose, and then an outline stitch for the mouth. And little outline stitches for the ears. And then we're gonna kind of give it a little stuffing face. There you go. How cute is that little bear face? So cute. I'm gonna stab him in the head. <laughs> I feel bad. Oh, poor little bear. But I have to secure his head, otherwise it'll kind of do whatever it wants. And I don't want that. So I'm actually gonna applique uh, through his ear and leave the end kind of hanging there so that it looks like it's coming out a little bit. And then I can take the needle out of the poor bear's head. <laughs> Okay, there we go. There's the needle gone. And now I can finish his little head. 
And then once the head is on, then we can work on the rest of him. Cute little bear. Make sure his little face is not too smushed. I like to try and even out the stuffing. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And I like to take my needle and scratch off the um, the little stamp there. Now we're going to do the little arms. And here are the arms. They're fairly simple. One's on the back, one's on the front. And then we stuff them. And then we applique them. So I applique the shoulder. And I left the bottom hanging like that. Cute little bear. Okay, this is what we have so far. How cute are these things? I just love the detail here. Okay, okay, so this bow was kind of a nightmare to put together. And, um... This is what it turned out. So basically make sure you follow the stamps and you look at the picture underneath. Um, you look at the picture that it comes with to give you an idea. But the, the bow comes with two layers, a front and a back, but they're kind of offset to each other and parts of it is stuffed. So it looks like a big full bow. And here I am, I'm just um, applicating the bow at the lower points so that the rest of it kind of hangs off. And the ribbon that comes out, I did first, so that one was easy, but putting the bow together was kind of a pain. Looks fine, though. So, now we're going to do the other present. So there's the first bow done. Now we're going to do the second bow. There's This one's a lot easier. This is what I'm used to making. Follow the diagram in the kit that it gives you. It's fairly simple to do. And then I like to applique the bows closed and then I like to put them on. I like these bows a lot better. <laughs> Much easier. And I'm just gonna applique this with a couple of beads and sequins and call it good. I'm going to secure it. Sorry, I'm out of the frame. I'm trying to secure the bow so it doesn't move around. Um, I noticed that it was hanging off the back, so I just decided to secure the back so it doesn't feel loose. I want them to be nice and secure. Okay. Yep. That's all it needed. That one doesn't need a, bo a bead. I thought I was going to put a bead on there, but nope. I'm, it's just fine the way it is. And then we have one more bow that goes right on the little bear. Same rules apply. Um, this one does have beads and sequins on it. Yeah, usually the bows have beads and sequins on it, but the blue one didn't, so... You can always add beads and sequins. Um, for the purpose of these t tutorials, I like to match the front of the, like the, the picture that it comes with as best I can to give you guys a general idea. And then you can add whatever pers like personalized, you know, whatever you want on here. I like to be completely neutral and just do it as the kits instruct. The bow really brings the bear alive, doesn't it? Cute. Something classic about a teddy bear at Christmas. Okay, once it's nice and secure, then we'll we'll be 
done for this tutorial. If you liked this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. That way um, YouTube knows that you want to see more and I know that you like these videos. Cute. All right, so this is what we have so far. How cute is this? We are not done yet. We have one more tutorial. Make sure you um, subscribe and put those notifications on so you do not miss anything. Um, there is an ornament that goes with it, so don't miss that. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.